I'm going through the wine data set here. Uh, you might hear some background noise, by the way. That's the rain against my windows. Um, you have price 61 that we're trying to predict from year of vintage, winter rain, average temperature in the summer, and um, harvest rate. Price 61 is price compared to 1961. That means it has to be positive. And to make sure that our model gives predictions that are positive always, what we'll do is create another variable called LN price 61, the natural log of price 61, like this. I'll paste it so that it ends up in the syntax window. And then run it. It'll give us our output window as well, and our new variable over there. Okay, we see a couple of missions here, and in general, the first thing to do when you have your new data is have a look at it um, through an overview of the frequencies, all the variables on the right over there. Let's see if this is off. Okay. And here we go. Here we have our price variable ranging from 0 0.10 to 1. So 1961 was actually the uh, year where the price was highest, apparently. The year of vintage running from 52 all the way up to 89. Uh, harvest rain, that is, no, winter rain is this. 376 all the way up to 845 and the temperature from 15 to almost 18 and the rain during harvest time well there's nothing so special about this we have the natural log these are all negative because uh, price is um, highest at one over there so there's basically nothing special to see here i see no real coding errors um, so the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is now have a look at what my correlations are between the predictor uh, variables that I have. Correlate, bivariate. This is a predictor, that's a predictor, that's a predictor, that's a predictor. Um, so let's see how that turns out. Okay, so all the correlations here are relatively small beneath 0.2. In, in this row, in this row, in this row, in that row. So the largest is minus 0.27, which is not uh, much to worry about. So this is good. Um, no reason to, to look at anything, basically. Nevertheless, to make sure that I'll find any um, sets of variables that are correlated, I'll run my first regression now with, as one of the options, um, the variance inflation factors. So I'm predicting the log of price from these vintage winter rain degrees and harvest rain. Not from the original price, of course, don't include that. Let's see what I want for my statistics. Um, and you see here clicked already my collinearity diagnostics. Normally these are not clicked uh, just yet, but I just practiced and then I clicked them as well. So they are in now. Plots. Let's have a look at the residual by the predicted and also produce all partial plots. Say, let's predict uh, the predicted values, the residuals, and my standardized DF betas. Here, I don't want to do anything. This is uh, the default, by the way. And bootstrap, I'm not going to do either. At least not yet. Okay, so this is my syntax for my first regression. I paste it to the syntax window. Actually, I forgot the uh, correlation matrix in here, but let's leave it as is for now. I run it, and there we go. Let's go through this. Uh, quite high R square, 0.8. Now it's a variance table. Um, here we have our coefficients, and let's look at our variance inflations. Variance inflation factors, they are close to 1, which is good. You don't want them high, especially not near uh, 10. Um, so there's not much to worry about. And we see here that the year of vintage has a negative effect. So uh, the later in time it becomes, the worse the wine is getting, apparently. Um, winter rain has a positive effect. So the more it rains in winter, the better it is. 
um, degrees is a positive effect. So the warmer it is in summer, the better it is. And harvest rain has a negative effect. Um, so the more rain during harvest time, the worse it is. You can see here from the beta coefficients that, uh, relatively speaking, the degree variable here is the one that is the most important because it has the highest beta coefficient. And all of the variables, in fact, have uh, significant influences. Okay, this will leave as is. And here we see the first um, assumption check. Basically, just to get an idea of which variables might be uh, sort of in our way. Here you see that these two and that one, perhaps also this one, bother me at least somewhat. Um, that would mean the largest value in terms of uh, predicted value and the two smallest ones and the one with the highest residual. If we forget about those, then these are actually quite okay. Sort of a random cloud, which is what we want to see. So there might be four um, outliers there. Let's just keep that in mind. And here we have our partial regression plots. Here are dependent variable, the predictor, and your year of vintage. This should look like, um, well, sort of like a, like a line with a decent cloud um, that follows the line. So here we have our straight line like this, sloping downward, and it looks like a uh, quite a normal line to me. Here, this is perhaps a bit worrying. This is a bit wide, so the best fitting line is, I think, like this. But these three, if we wouldn't have these, then it would be, well, this would be the best regression line. So this is a bit worrying. So the lowest three values for October through March rain also might be a bit uh, worrying. This is not so bad. Sloping upwards, the temperature variable. Perhaps you should worry a bit about that, but I'm not so sure. And this one's also not so bad. It's sloping downward, and it's okay. So there are some indications that there might be a couple of uh, outliers. If I uh, if I run in trouble, I'll have a look at those.